after last week's 77 nothing win over Texas A&M hosting Baylor and favored by 52. It's 52 points. First quarter, Jason White, nation's leader in passing efficiency, efficient. Brandon Jones, 7-zip. Next Sooner possession, White against the Bears defense, which came in ranked 109th out of 117 D1A teams. Mark Clayton, 47, 14-zip. Clayton, two grabs for a score from White, who went on to set the school's single-season record for TD passes with 36. Tosses four in this game. Finds Will Peoples for the third one. That was Will from Peoples Arrow. They actually booed the home team a bit in the second half for sloppiness. 41-3. Oh, yeah, that's sloppy. Folks in the Lone Star State have a saying, don't mess with Texas. Well, someone forgot to tell Coach Stoops. OU has whipped four teams from Texas this season by a combined score of 220-19. to At Texas Tech next weekend, Oklahoma taking another step to taste in sugar. And that's what our game day crew is talking about. So the top four BCS contenders all move on. Only Ohio State played a close game, a margin of victory not in the BCS computers, thanks to the brilliant move of the coaches. The Buckeyes' close win doesn't hurt them, but we think it'll be pretty close between USC and Ohio State for 2-3. Their opponents each went 1-3 and three today, but Ohio State strength the schedule, computer ratings beginning to close that gap. Give me the Lee Corso top five. Well, Michigan, boy, they're very, very tough offense, defense, and they got great wins at Ann Arbor. Then you got LSU, great defense. Ohio State, all they do is win. USC is the best football team in the nation besides Oklahoma, and I think it would be a shame if USC didn't play Oklahoma. That's the game I want to see. I think that's the game everybody wants oh. to see at the end of the year because of all the great athletes. I'm with you, the same five, just a different order. Michigan, I have at number five, and right now, Michigan closing and looking very good. Ohio State still at number four. A good win today, but not impressive enough to move past LSU, who is dominant once again this weekend, and their offense continues to get better. USC, Lee is right. The formula may not work out for them at the end, but if you're just looking for a team that could match up against uh, Oklahoma, USC on offense and defense is that team because of all the great athletic ability. Heisman, if you're looking at dark horses, Philip Rivers, a brilliant day against the Knowles, but mistakes, and they lose the game. That hurts his cause. How do you see things? Larry Fitzgerald, a pit receiver. I don't know if a South Row win it. I don't know if a South Row or a receiver could win it, but he's a candidate. I like Jason White, number two at Oklahoma, but my candidate is Eli Manning. If he's not the Heisman Trophy winner. He gets the trophy for the most valuable football player in the country. Again, same three here for me. Jason White, I have it number three. It's nothing against Jason White. Jason White's having a great year, but it's because of the two ahead of him. Eli Manning with the win last week. Such impressive stats all year long. But the wins and losses, was he going to be able to amount enough wins? The answer up to this point is yes. The LSU game will tell you about his uh, the candidacy. And then Larry Fitzgerald, best player in the country. Heisman Trophy goes to the best player in college football. Larry Fitzgerald's the guy. Jason White can win the national championship and the Heisman Trophy, but coming up next, we'll explain why chances are he probably won't. A did you know is after this. All season winds down. Several good candidates have emerged for the Heisman Trophy. Larry Fitzgerald, Jason White, Eli Manning, among others. White threw for four touchdowns Saturday as Oklahoma rolled over Baylor. Yeah, he's attempted to pull off a rare double. Did you know only two quarterbacks in the last 55 years have won the Heisman Trophy and a consensus national championship in the same season? That does it for us. I'm Neil Everett. I'm Steve Berthune. College game day final is next. Enjoy. This is College Game Day Final. Let's go, well, let's go to the top. Have we omitted someone? No. Oh, there they are. How about the number one team in the land? Oklahoma oh, against Baylor. Speaking of Heisman Trophy candidates, we were a few moments ago. Jason White was outstanding again. Jason White, great protection, easy touchdown. It's the first quarter. They're up 7 0. And Reese Davis says, Get the starters out. No, oh, I didn't. It only went in 70 to nothing. Oh, 77. Oh. Antonio Perkins, this is for the record. This would be his eighth punt return. Oh, oh! Missed it by that much. Sooners would score, though. It's 24-0. Now it's 24-3. White would find Will Peoples. Four touchdown passes. Set a school record for touchdown passes in the season with 36, 41-3. It's the final there. You know what? what? I think the Sooners could probably go across that Red River and they could annex part of Texas and bring it into Oklahoma if they wanted to because they own that place. Mm. They have played four teams from the state of Texas this year. They played North Texas, Texas, A&M, and Baylor. Oh, they, they're only beating them by about 50 points a game. Stuff too. Well, they've got Texas Tech coming up next, and they, they can come on and get them some. <laughs> the Sooners are on their way. They're on their way to Nokia Sugar. Heisman, Wendy's Heisman update. 
had the guys who are at the head of the class right now and guys who were able to help themselves today with the exception of Eli Manning who did not play. He'll have a chance next week against LSU. Larry Fitzgerald, his team lost, but oh my goodness, I mean, come on. This guy's unbelievable. And Matt Leinert put up more great numbers in that Norm Chow offense. Chris Perry continues to be among the nation's leading rushers. Kevin Jones, despite the narrow escape for Virginia Tech against Temple, is able to put up a solid day rushing the ball again. Who do you like? I like Larry Fitzgerald, and unfortunately because of the loss that they had today, I think that he'll lose some voters, and he should not lose voters and because he's the best player in America. There are some voters out there that are uneducated voters because they're going to look at the score and say that Pittsburgh lost, and Larry Fitzgerald doesn't play defense, doesn't play special teams, and doesn't call the plays. He had a fantastic game today. I think he and Jason White are still number one and number two, on my list at least. I think he will slip some, you're right. I mean, a lot of the voters don't see all the games. They may not be uneducated, but they don't get to see all the stuff. I, but I think Eli Manning is the guy for me. What a great opportunity next week against LSU. It'll be on national TV. I think if he wins that game and has a huge day, he'll go to the top. I really believe that'll happen with the Heisman voters. I'm not saying that's my opinion. I think the Heisman voters, they love those late season games, big opponents on national TV when you have to get it done, and they're a great story. Mm -hmm. Look where Ole Miss has come from. That was a terrible, terrible football team. And they had a very bad start this year, yes, too. One did. thing I would say about the Heisman voters, get to define outstanding in a lot of different ways, and some of them weigh more heavily whether a team is winning and whether you put uh, put up those numbers on a team. Who's but Reece, I, I understand. I've heard I know them what say, you're say the best quarterback, the quarterback on the best team in America should win the Heisman. That's the most ludicrous argument I've ever the heard. Best I agree with you, but I'm telling you that sometimes they factor in winning in that outstanding okay. category. We we need to do some academic pursuit here to try to figure out the BCS standings presented by Allstate. Order looks the same. Okay, here's the thing. The difference between USC and Ohio State, according to our guru, Brad Edwards, probably going to shrink to between a tenth and a quarter of a point, giving Ohio State perhaps the opportunity to get up a spot in the polls to pass USC. As for TCU, if Michigan beats Ohio State, Michigan will pass TCU. The question is, will Ohio State fall below them? That's only to guarantee the Horned Frogs a BCS spot if they were able to win out. Of course, there would be political pressure to go ahead and invite them anyway.